Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. My name is Gio, and I'm excited to present a much-needed episode on restoring a backup from Synology NAS using Active Backup for Business. This is otherwise known as ABB, and I will refer to that in this episode. Okay, so we're a managed service provider, and we offer backup services to our customers based on their needs and the criticalness of their data. Backups should always follow a 3 one rule, which is your production data plus two copies, one being off-site. Now, let me explain the data recovery scenario I'm going to demonstrate for you today. We have a remote Synology NAS called DS2, and it's installed at one of our customers' offices. We use Active Backup for Business to back up a physical production server to the local NAS server at 3 a.m. every morning. We then replicate this backup to our Synology NAS at our office over a VPN. Our Synology NAS is called DS1. For the sake of this demo, we are going to restore this server into a virtual VMware environment. You need to play, pay close attention to the steps and terminology used during this demo as it's a key to a successful recovery. Okay, everybody ready for a demo? Let's get started. Okay, now what I'm going to show you over here is our remote Synology NAS. Remember I said it's DS2. Okay, this is at our customer site. And if I go into here in the snapshot replication, you can see that this snapshot was replicated an hour ago. And if we go into recovery and we scroll down, we can see we have 22 restore points. Now, if we look on the other side, we're going to see 21. But for the sake of this, we we're storing quite a bit, all right? And then, so that's enough on this side. What I'm gonna do now is come over on this side and you'll see that if I go under here, you can see that we did get a replica and it's successful. It was replicated from DS2. If we go down here, hour ago. If we go down here into recovery, oh, wrong one. Okay, we have a little bit more restore points on this side than we do on the other side, but that here nor there, we've got enough. We're going to restore from, today is the Monday, the 24th of July, and we're going to restore from Sunday, the 23rd, okay? So we're going to go through this whole process. So pay close attention to what is being done here, because you have to do this in the order, and then you have to do it in the same order going backward. Here, I'll explain why as we get into this. So on our Synology, on the destination Synology, we're gonna launch Active Backup for Business. And we're gonna go under storage. And right now we see this storage in here and we need to actually delete because we already relinked it. Okay, let me cancel. Now I'm going to show you, if you don't think do things, which, which I did not do in the proper order, um, you end up reprotecting this volume and then you cannot get rid of it because it's read only. So I had to do another force failover and then I'm going to be able to delete this and that should go away. All right. Now that I did this, I'm going to close this out. I'm going to come back in. And I'm going to basically reprotect because I want to start show you from ground zero how this is done. I'm going to reprotect. Now keep in mind, this remote Synology is still accessible. So I can't do a failover, traditional failover, meaning that site's unavailable and I need to do a failover but I can force a failover. Now the terminology and the way Synology lays it out is a little different than maybe some of the other methods like Zerto or Veeam or some of the other processes out there. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna explain the Synology's terminology of what a failover, a switch over and, and a uh, force failover. A force failover is basically a switch over. You're, you're assuming the role of the remote site. So. Okay, so this is done processing, it's back healthy, and it did another replica. So I'm gonna go ahead and get out of this and let's resume where we were at. So let me go back to here. 
and I'm going to go into active backup for business and show you in storage, I only see my own local store. This is our one that we're backing up. This is our local repository. Now, when you go into snapshot replication and you go down under recovery, the first thing you do here is you say, here's a switch over and a force failover. They're basically the same thing in this scenario. I'm just, I'm just changing roles. So I'm going to pick force failover because I'm going to fail over this unit. Now it says, what do you want to, what snapshot do you want? What do you want to fail over? Now, remember, I told you I want the one from Sunday, and I'll take the one from Sunday at 4 o'clock, okay? We're doing backups at 3 and snapshots at 4. So I'm going to go ahead and force a failover. And then this is going to go, and we'll resume it. Okay, now it says that we successfully switched over. Now what we have to do is once we do that, we got to kind of relink it to us because it's still linked to the other side. So that's the next step is you bring up active. Remember, we were in snapshot replication. We're now going to go into active backup for business and we're going to do a relink. And now he says, hey, okay, this is your snapshot. You want to relink this from this backup on 723 at three o'clock. Is that what you want? And I'm going to say relink. Now, I'm not going to do it yet because I want to show you something. Let's go here. We're going to go into control panel, shared folders. And this hasn't refreshed, but typically what happens, it's not refreshed yet. This is going to be read only. I cannot write to it yet. So that's why you want to relink. Once you relink, it is now going to become uh, writable. All right. So I'm going to go in here. Actually, I'm sorry. Let me let me rephrase that. When I did the force failover, it becomes it becomes writable. So I'm going to relink it here, and I'm going to relink, and it's going to say credentials, whatever. Okay, I'm going to accept that. Now it's relinking. So what basically relinking is is hey, now it's available locally for here, and you can restore anything. You you can restore that snapshot that you destined when you were, when you picked it out of the uh, snapshot replication application. So once I do that, we have no physical servers in our environment, it's only virtual. So the only physical server is now gonna be this guy, all right? And when I go into here, I can now say restore. And this says, okay, what do you wanna restore? Well, I wanna restore this guy. And I'm gonna say next. It's gonna say, what do you wanna do? And I want to restore to, since I'm on VM, some of you might be on Hyper-V. You can restore to Hyper-V. I'm going to restore to VMware. That's our environment. Now, two things you can do. You can do an instant restore. This takes about, for this server, it should be about an hour and a half versus maybe six hours for this one. All right. I, I'm going to, for the sake of this video, I'm going to do instant restore. Now, when I do this, there's a few other steps that you need to take. One is you have to, and I'll show you this. So we'll just do the instant restore. Now, what do you want to call this? I'm just going to call it restore one. And it's now this is my vCenter environment and yours, it might be Hyper-V. So you'll have to pick your cluster, your hypervisor, things of that nature. So we're going to pick the site, which is an Irvine data center. And then we're going to pick our hypervisor, where do we want to restore? What computing environment? We're going to put it on this guy. We have two hypervisors here. And then it says, what network do you want to attach to? Well, we have the VM network. That's our, tr the trusted network and VM network are one and the same, but I'm just going to pick VM network. That's how all our other VMs run. Okay, I don't, I don't power on after the restoration because I have to change a few things and I'll show you what those are. Now, just so you understand what's happening here is we're restoring, but we're restoring into a, a temporary storage. And I'm going to show you what that is. So if we go here and we go over to our data stores, 
when we pull this down, let me refresh the screen here. There it is, okay. We're restoring into this data store. Now this data store is temporary. We want, don't wanna leave this up. So that's gonna be the second part of this that I'm gonna show you. So let's go ahead and go back to our, this is at 26%. We'll wait for it to get to 100. Okay, now this says it took us a minute and 30 seconds, okay? Not, not, not a big deal. Now this is ready for machine, virtual machine migration. On an instant restore, you have to come up here. And you, now you have to tell it, I'm in a temporary data store. Where do I want the permanent one to live? So I have to go pick it. So I'll come down here. And I'll say, I want to put it on this data store. And I will cl uh, click done. Now this is going to take a little while. So it says migrating. Now if I come back here, it's basically moving it in, if, if you're aware of uh, how VMware and vCenter works, you have a, a task called migrate, or we call it vMotion. This is basically performing that task. It's moving the storage from this temporary to this guy here. So if we were to look at this and we browse files in this data store, we will see, it may not be created yet. Not created yet, but it will be created. There will be a new data store in here, basically with this information. It will be that, but we haven't got to that point yet. So basically it's gonna copy this data store over to this data store locally. So you can see we're still at only Okay, so it said it failed. So let's try it again. We're gonna go in and we're gonna say, now I should have stayed out of there. It could have been because I was monkeying around in there, but we're gonna do it again. Let me pick done. Oh, here's the step I forgot, let's cancel. This is a very important, remember I told you about steps. This is what's very important. I brought this server over, but the res computing resources on this server aren't what I have available, so I can't move it. So what you have to do is come over here. This is very, very, very important. Now, I'm gonna show you something. As soon as I go into here, this is why it failed. Look at that. I don't have 16 CPUs on this particular hypervisor. So that's why it failed when I did the migration point, saying, look, you don't have the resources to support this. So I need to change this. So I'm going to go back to, let's say, two CPUs. I'll leave it at 16 gig. I don't know why it rounds down a little bit. Um, I, could, I could round that up and just say 16. That's fine. And we'll pick OK. Very very, very important. So don't forget it. You got to do that step first. Now, I don't know how it would be in Hyper-V. It might be the same scenario. Your, your hypervisors may not support physically the environment, so you may have to go in and alter that as well. I can't tell you one way or another. So I'm going to go ahead and say migrate VM. I'm going to pick the data store. All right, and then there we go. So there's the volume I want to move it to. Now it's going to go. Now, since I fixed that, now if I go back here, you see it's, it's, it's got the job going, relocate virtual machine. Now if I go over to here, you see this, it's moving out of this data store and into this data store. You see it here, it created it now that I got the computing resources corrected. So this can take a while, roughly an hour and a half, and we'll continue on on the video. Now a little added functionality I figured I'd show you while uh, we're waiting for this. We're elapsed time of 12 minutes. We're about half, almost halfway through, but don't let this deceive you. Um, it will take about an hour and a half.
give or take. All right, so uh, while this is going, I'm gonna go ahead and minimize it. I'll show you something else that there's another application on the Synology is called Active Backup for Business Portal. And what this will allow me to do, if I go in here, you see this timeline across the bottom here, as soon as it refreshes. Now what you're gonna see here is, these will be all our local virtual machines that we have locally to our Synology here, DS1. However, because I did a relink and relinked that replica, I can now see that server as well. Now, what's the advantage of this? What if I wanna just get a file back? What if the customer said, oh man, I deleted my QuickBooks file, I need it back. And I didn't re want to restore the whole virtual machine. Well, this is the app you use to restore a file or folder. Now, when I go ahead and I, let me close this out here for a minute. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change my focus. Instead of being on the v our vCenter server, I'm going to scroll all the way down. And who's the last one on the list but the server I'm recovering right now. So I'm basically going to say, hey, look, I need a file folder off of this server. And this presents me with my C drive and my D drive. Okay, you can see I can go, this is on 7.23 at 3 o'clock because that's what I pulled back over. So I can come over here and I can say, huh, I want QuickBooks data. Now, for this particular customer, we're going to restore their whole, well, they call it SBT, which is a basically a database. It's an old uh, Visual Fox Pro database, or they call it ACPAC database from years ago. But we're actually restoring this for them. But this is going to take a long time. But you can see I can go in here, and I can pick a QuickBooks file. I can go in anywhere here. All right. So, But for the sake of this, uh, so this is the application, the active backup for business that you would use. So I just wanted to show you that while we're waiting. Okay, so we're going to close the Active Backup for Business portal for now. We'll come back into it later. Let's come back into here. Watch our recovery. We're at 60% and we're about an hour in. So like I said, probably an hour and a half till we complete. And then we'll go the procedure from there and I'll show you everything. Okay, so we're, um, we're completed here. Hour and a half, like I said, within three minutes, and we have a successful restore, okay? So, let's validate that. We're going to go over here, we're going to go over to our VMs, and we're going to see restore one. Now, okay, it's here. It says it's 2008 R2. We're going to make sure it's in the right data store, which is this data store, not the temporary one anymore. And... Um, I'm not going to fire it up because we did get it restored. I know it'll fire up, but I'm just showing you the process of how we we get there, okay? Now, here's the part you have to remember. Now that we've got it restored, how do we get back to, since that unit isn't down, we did this for the purpose of, let's say a test failover, for lack of better words, but let's go back here and how do we now get back to where we were before? So number one, I'm going to clear this. Then we're going to go in here and we're going to get rid of this. All right. We don't need it anymore. We've already went ahead and restored it. So you got to kind of go back in somewhat of an order that you actually not in somewhat of an order in an order that you actually did this. So I'm going to get rid of this. We don't need it anymore. And the reason I'm deleting it now, because once we reprotect we no longer have, it's going to be read only. We don't have access. Okay, now you can see it's cleared. Now what we're going to do is we're going to close this down. We got to go back into snapshot replication. And, oh, actually, one more step. Sorry, we almost missed a step. Let's go back in here. Go into storage. We got this guy. All right, we need to get rid of it. We don't need it here anymore. We're done with it. Okay, so we need to delete it. 
It says, hey, I understand. I don't need these files anymore. Delete. Okay, now that's gone. Now we can get out of this tool. Back into this tool. And then we got to go back here. And this says, hey, you still failed over to me. What am I going to do? I want to reprotect. As soon as I hit reprotect, that folder now becomes read only or that volume becomes read only. And we can no longer write to it other than the replicate surfer, the active backup for business replication tool. Okay. Now when we get this, we say, okay, where are we going to get our source from? So we want to continue to keep replicating from the remote side. So we're going to say, the new destination server is still going to be DS1, and we're going to replicate. Now, this is a very, very similar to switch to the switch role because we're just switching roles. We're saying, okay, now this one's going to be the new backup. So let's say in a scenario, let's say the remote site burned, you know, that building burned to the ground, and this now becomes the source. Well, we may replicate this to another Synology at another site that we have, all right? But in this case, we're not. So we're just gonna say reprotect back to the original. Or let's say, let's say the Synology had an issue and we had to replace that Synology and we're backing up, backing up to it again with the same physical server, then we might wanna reprotect and go back to that server and, and start grabbing replicas from that Synology DS2. So we're gonna say reprotect. Okay, and there we go. Reprotect replication. So now we went back and we grabbed another replica. Now there's 28 restore points. Okay, that's fine. So basically, when we reprotect, we tell the DS2, the remote Synology, hey, go back out and grab another snapshot. Let's just bring it here and uh, keep us up to date. Okay, because there might have been an interval there where we're not getting replicas while we're in a failover state. So once we take it out of that and go back to that Synology, we're saying, okay, uh, give me another snapshot or give me another replication. All right. Hope everybody, um, let me go back to my camera here. Get out of my screen. Hope everybody found this useful and uh, we'll just keep them coming. Uh, if you like this, please like our channel, follow our channel and look for other episodes. We're, we're slowly rolling here, but we'll keep them coming. They're, these are pretty technical uh, episodes we're going to be doing, but we'll do some easy ones too. All right. I hope everybody has a great day, evening, or wherever you're out in the country. All right. Ciao for now.